you left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub Zeru's festival tradition or something? Less questions, more wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zeru's festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh, you're... What? Fucky? Sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Dunyarzad loves her, but none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Dia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Dia can handle them. Hey, Traveler! Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. That's close enough. Huh? Propagate. Yeah. Where do you think huh? you're going? Yeah. Huh? 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 Off the jungle. Yeah. No more tricks up huh? your sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! Take that! 
Scatter! Need! both. Dinyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey, the windows are unlocked. Okay, uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. This was only a temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about, she must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Dunyarzad's puppet.
traveler. You must be exhausted. Come to think of it, we've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Denyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Milu's dance of Subzeru's. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh, so she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... What? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? Uh, traveler? You don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait! They're not reacting! Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course! If this is the Sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this! So they're just substitutes! What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? <laughs> like I said... They symbolize the goddess of flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisaras went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Ah, that beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice! Tanyarzad, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, how? Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, huh? You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Hey! They disappeared! So Nilu's the host! What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore! 
But in Milu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage! It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Milu assumed there would be real Patisaras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Milu? But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Milu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the first sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife, lying next to him, said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon, like the sage in the story! I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub -Zero's festival is almost over, too. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of sub -Zero's as beautiful as we can. Dedicate this to our god, the dance of Subzerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilo's dance.
mining traveler. Oh, Pai Mon feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Paimon's head feels super heavy. Did we oversleep? Do you even remember going to sleep last night? Paimon thinks it was after the Subzeru's festival. The Subzeru's festival! Have we finally escaped from the Subzeru Samsara? Quick! Take off your Akashi terminal! Festival for me. I'm sorry, who are. Dinarzad! <laughs> You're okay! Oh, don't scare us like that! Oh, a traveler, Paimon! I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream, and I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm, how about by the Traveler's favorite bench? Let's talk about Dinyarzad first. It's such a relief that she's all right! Mm-hmm. After we parted on the last day of the Subzerus Festival, I left the city and saw what the Traveler had described. Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyar Zod could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though. It will return to its original dream, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible, but it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. So it looks like we did manage to save Dinyarzad in the end! And not a moment too soon! Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm. <sighs> I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. All right. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the Traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree in a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said, World, and forget me. Yeah, so you do know! We've been wanting to ask you what that was about, and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm... It seems like the Traveler established a connection to Erminsoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadevata's residual consciousness in Erminsoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, 
Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Ruka Devata? We thought it was from the Scarlet King! The Scarlet King? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so what does the message mean? <sighs> I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Ermin Soul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermin Soul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Ermin Soul? Oh, Tainari also said that Ermin Soul is sick! Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? But even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about, it seems like our search for you was all in vain. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Ermin Soul. This is the only one left. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Ermin Soul's fate, as well as to that's. To be accurate, I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. Uh, how did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha Terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this Bionic Snishnayan puppet. Uh... Oh, hold on! Did we just learn some deep dark secret? So Catherine is... No... I wonder Paimon felt something was off about her. What about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people's? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Suristana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Suristana, Ostensibly for the sake of protecting me, but I've hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So, the sages basically put their new Archon under house arrest? How dare they! Why don't you teach them a lesson, Nahida? In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was omniscient and omnipotent. Even after her death, the Akasha is still empowering this nation. And I... I'm still really far away from being able to call myself the God of Wisdom. Moreover, the Academia is also more proficient at governing this country. My existence has little meaning. Yeah, you got a lot! Believers, just look at the Subzero's festival. Everyone who showed up truly loves you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. But I honestly don't need physical freedom as long as I can connect my consciousness to the Akasha. Trying to find a way to save Ermin Soul is my life's mission and top priority. I will work on that and try to live up to being a deity in the meantime. Every once in a while, I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. There has never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path. 
and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange, if the Traveler hadn't broken the Subzeru Samsara, the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha, but I couldn't find anything suspicious. And all the people of interest seem to purposely avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. I think they're deliberately trying to hide something. Oh, that reminds Paimon. In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Tainari to join some kind of project. Could it be related? Regardless, I need to first investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. But I'll have to be discreet, or they'll see me coming. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yeah, it's been such a long time. No one's noticed something's up? It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the Sage's misdirection. Misdirection? The Sage has convinced everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru. Even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the Sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Besides, Greater Lord Ruka Devata must have created the Akasha in the hopes that it could be used to its full potential. That's why I've never come out strongly against this. <sighs> anyway, the perspective advocated by the Sages drowned out any voices of doubt. By now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. Got it! I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. <sighs> to be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project, on the scale of the Subzeru Samsara, in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. Leave everything to us. <laughs> what a relief. <sighs> this is truly the most exhausting birthday I've ever had. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? I... Uh, maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up. I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you.